Are we, uh, are we live? Yes, we are live, Martin. Hey, Calvin. Hey, Mark. Okay, well, uh, hi, everybody. I'm, I'm not sure what's happening with the room. It looks like it's, uh, it's full pretty quickly, Calv. Yeah? Exciting, um, isn't it? Anyway, listen. Somebody, hang on. Somebody's just saying, sending me a message here saying they can't get in. Listen, guys, I'm not sure what's happening with the room. I think we're full pretty quickly. Um, if anybody can't get in, don't worry. We are recording this, and we'll, um, we'll have the recording up uh, as soon as we possibly can. So, okay. Um, well, it's Friday the 15th of November. It's uh, midday, 1 o'clock in the afternoon here in Europe. I think we've got plenty of people from Korea and over in Asia. I think it's in the evening over there, some 8 o'clock or something like that. And welcome to our third Ask Me Anything. Um, here today, we have the pleasure of um, asking questions to Calvin. Calvin Adamus is the originator of this whole idea. Calvin, like myself, um, Calvin has been kind of um, evolved in gaming all his life. Like myself, from the very early games, when gaming first started as an industry and became popular, and uh, I'm not going to steal Calvin's story here, but basically, I have children who are crazy gamers. Calvin's got a son who's a crazy gamer, oh, and uh, it was when he purchased a gaming computer for his son that this whole concept um, originated. So, Calvin, let me, uh, let me hand over to you. You can tell your own story and uh, let everybody know how we know each other, how the idea got started, how we began to work on this together. Yeah, um, and I'll just start to pull all the questions together whilst you're doing that. Excellent, Martin. Excellent. Well, first of all, I'm very excited to be on part of the of the gaming concept here. Um, I'm very proud to be working with uh, a lot of uh, very knowledgeable and very skillful people. Um, together with uh, people like Miguel Ferrero, which is our chief gaming officer, our, our advisors, Joseph Rosic, our CTO, Buki Ben Nathan, and our developer team. Well, basically, my, my task has been been uh, been there to put a product together, putting the platform together. Well, as you said, Martin, uh, I have one son, which is a crazy gamer, but uh, I have four other children. And uh, in this house, we play games all the time, constantly, on several different uh, uh, um, um, devices. It's just games all the, all the time. And yeah, in 2017, it was, uh, at that time, there was, uh, there was a lot of mining going on. And one of the things I always wanted to do at the time, while well, studying and checking out to do was, was mining. And then, uh, well, when I bought a computer for my son, I realized there's a GPU in it. Well, one and one makes, uh, makes three in this case. Uh, there the ID came from. And speaking with you, we just actually start putting the, the system together we have now. Our, our, uh, our um, platform. I need to say, Martin, that, uh, that uh, it has been actually a very exciting ride, Martin. Uh, I yes. consider myself as having the most exciting job of everyone, by the way, because, you know, you, you're playing here with cutting-edge technology, uh, speaking with people who are uh, totally motivated to the bones. Uh, you must understand that when you talk about gaming, well, if as, as you know, eight of the ten people playing games, uh, our whole lives are gamified. Uh, so it's a core uh, sentiment, uh, emotions from most of the people. And to being on the on the verge, on the base of setting up a platform that will change or influence many people's lives, well, that excites me. Yeah, and it looks that we are getting uh, closer and closer to the to the to our uh, well, final product. Uh, hopefully, within the next couple of months, we will start showing uh, some results of. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy here today to ask uh, any questions from all the guys. I guess you've got people from social media, Martin. I guess some people in the room have some questions. Yeah, there's, um, um, there's quite a lot of questions coming. I think this is probably going to be the AMA with the most questions. So <laughs> what, I've, what I've been doing prior to this call and just with the recent ones that have come in, Calvin, is instead of I've been grouping the questions together because okay. a lot of the questions are very similar or exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, if I don't call out anybody's name here, guys, it's because your question may be very, very similar or identical to one of the questions I asked. So I put them into kind of categories. And I think we've got 
everything covered, yeah? So, uh, well, let's get started, yeah? The first question, um, this actually originally came from Carlos from Facebook, but uh, this, is, this is a question that's been asked a lot of times, right? Calvin, well, when will the platform be up and running? Yeah, that's a good question, Carlos. That's a good question. Uh, before I answer the question, like straight up to answer the question, I, I, I just, you know, we, we must think about why we built the platform as it is. Uh, we know that many gamers spend many hours playing uh, games and many of these gamers have an ambition to be an, or the dream to be a professional gamer. Um, taking these two points in consideration, uh, when we built the platform, we actually made the platform a sort, a sort of tool for gamers. Yeah, um, within our platform, the gamer can um, the gamer can develop his skills to play better. Um, he can one-click share the messages with his followers or with his friends. Uh, he can enjoy his hobby, uh, playing games. And he can manage basically his digital assets in gaming assets or normal assets. So he can all do that in one application. That has been, that has been actually the basic thought of, of the platform. Uh, when this platform will be ready, well, um, I uh, kindly refer to our roadmap. Uh, roadmap is on our, on our website. Uh, according to the roadmap, we will be having the first versions ready in the third quarter, uh, sorry, the second quarter of 2019. Uh, that will be first we're going to have an MVP, that's a minimum viable product that is with the uh, least uh, features in it. And then we're going to release phase by phase uh, more features and more uh, well, products within our own platform. Yeah. yeah, you could maybe mention now, right now, I mean, we originally did the, we had three phases. We had an alpha phase, a beta phase, and, uh, and an MVP and beyond phase, if you will. So right now, I mean, maybe you could tell people where we are with the beta. Uh, at this moment, we're running a closed beta test. The, okay. After the, the open uh, alpha test, where we had approximately 100 uh, testers in 12 different countries in five continents, uh, where we tested things like uh, the GPUs they're using, the brand of GPUs, the, the motherboards, the operating systems. Uh, we had like a couple of hundred of bugs we solved uh, to see basically uh, how it works and if it's possible, viable to get it done. Uh, it was very successful and on, on all, all fronts, it was, uh, we finished it. So what we did was uh, we gathered the data, we, we um, we uh, analyzed all the data and then we decided to do a closed beta version, a beta test. Uh, at this moment, it's still running. Uh, we're planning to have the open beta testing in January. There, where we're going to ask, uh, we're actually gonna, basically going to scale the, the closed beta, beta testing up. And then after that, we will go to the MVP. Yeah. That's, the, that's the basically the, the last phase. That's a, once we have the MVP, well, then it's just a matter of starting adding more components to the, to the platform uh, to make it totally ready. Actually, one of the questions that's just come in whilst, uh, whilst you're talking about that, Calvin, is uh, somebody's asking how do they partake in the beta testing? Yeah, that's very easy. Just send me an email, kelvin at gaming.io, or contact me in, uh, in our uh, WhatsApp, uh, sorry, in our Telegram group, Yep. And I will send you an email with the data so you can uh, sign up. Yeah, I'll put you on the waiting list depending on how many people we have. Okay, so let's just sum that up. We've done the alpha, we've closed it. We've got a, a closed beta now. You'll be opening the beta um, over the coming maybe eight weeks even, could be possibly. Yeah, approximately. Yep. Um, and the platform will be up and running with a public version uh, end of first, beginning of the second quarter, 2020. All be all being well, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, excellent. Thank you, Calvin. Um, ah, here's a good one. This you're going to like this one, right? I mean, Calvin and myself, we went to the Madrid Games Week not long ago, about a, just over a month ago now. And one of the things that uh, just blew our mind there was uh, 12 months prior, we'd been to the same event and we saw some VR and some AR. Oh yeah, but as VR. you know, Calvin, right? This time around, VA and a VR and AR was just like mind blowing. Yeah. So one of the questions here is come from Razor B on Instagram. And he says, what are your thoughts about virtual reality 
and you have virtual reality in your platform. You can well, include in that augmented reality, mixed reality, everything, throw the lot in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like you said, Martin, uh, I remember last year when we went to Madrid uh, Games Week, it was great. Uh, the, there was like 10,000 square meters of uh, games and computers and everything everywhere. And there was just one section within the, within the pavilion, which was VR. Well, this year we came there again, and it was again. Uh, well, let's, this year was like three pavilions uh, big, yeah. and which one? One of them was f only VR. Yeah. So imagine the growth of virtual reality. Uh, how how fast it goes. Uh, it has to do with also with the prices. I think at the moment the prices of the headset are really going down. Correct. Uh, the GPUs are getting faster and also the prices of GPUs are getting stable. So um, I really think, and uh, together with me, uh, also Miguel Ferreiro, which is our chief gaming officer, that VR is the future. Yeah, And also one of the things has to do with, uh, with the popularity of VR is the rollout of 5G. Yeah, that makes yep. a, a faster and quicker uh, experience in the, in the VR world. So basically, I think uh, with me uh, the figures uh, you can f you can Google uh, the VR figures going with double figures the growth double figures a year uh, that VR is the future of gaming. Um, so that's just something we definitely want to be stepping in. Uh, if you want to bet your money on gaming then you know vr is an, definitely an, a, a bet you want to place so uh, what we did is uh, in our platform we have a vr section yeah the vr section will be basically the whole platform we have uh, in vr so you can with your finger point out which menu you want to have and you can also have our vr games yeah. And not only games, by the way, because VR is not only games. VR can also help you with skills, uh, getting better in some skills in life. Uh, you can also uh, gather information. Uh, you can also, for example, an engine of a car. You can dismantle an engine of a car by parts without having the engine there. So it's going to save you time and get you better in skills. So those are all the things we want to implement in our platform. Yeah, extraordinary. I mean, the demos we saw there, yeah. And mine are just unbelievable. They're, they're truly mind blowing. The, yeah, I drove a Ferrari one car. <laughs> that was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we went on a virtual um, roller coaster uh, where we were, we were both we both tried it. We were in a seat that was suspended that moved you around, and literally yeah. we did 360 degrees in this thing with the virtual reality headset on, and it was just the most extraordinary. I mean, yeah. as far as your senses are concerned. You're not sat in a chair in a in a big hall. You're you're actually all of your senses are, are, are witnessing and experiencing the whole roller coaster as if it was real. It's the most incredible thing. And that's all about Martin. It's all about uh, emotions and passion about it. I mean, I I did not see anyone came out of one of these VR simulations with an with uh, with a depressed head. Everybody was smiling afterwards, and everybody wanted to go more and more. Yeah. So the future is definitely going to be VR. But hey, let's do not discard normal gaming. Uh, it's going to take still going to take approximately between the five and the ten years before the whole VR is going to be rolled out everywhere. When the headsets are going to get better and cheaper and even smaller at the at the end. So yeah. there is still a long road to go, but uh, it's going to be an exciting road, Martin. Yeah, and it isn't just gaming as as we saw the virtual meetings and. It, things you know banking done virtually yeah virtually. that wasn't a nice one huh? extraordinary extraordinary we're, we're really on the cusp of, of just so, so many breakthroughs with high-speed 5g with VR that this whole landscape is going to be unrecognizable in yeah. the couple of years yeah. yeah one of the things I also like very much about VR was the meeting uh, meeting uh, uh, way you can have a meeting with your friends in a sort of well virtual room, virtual, but yeah. you are like all together and you can see each other like we, 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 you know like they're on, on your at your side, yeah. and that's also something that is also a bit emotional because I also believe that many people uh, work in different countries or we have uh, uh, countrymen who are uh, in, uh, in war uh, zones. You know those people can just see their children and have a chat with the children as if they were. Uh, at the side, so it's uh, good for humanity, I guess. Uh, virtual reality, the next best thing after being with your loved one uh, in the same room. Let me say it this way. Okay, let's move on, Carl. That could be. Uh, yeah, yeah, we could go all, all hours, no? <laughs> all right. Okay, this is. I, I. I'm not sure whether this is right. I'm from Berlin, Caroline, I think. Um, 
Calvin, can you elaborate on the social media control panel and what do you mean by that? Um, social media control panel. Okay. Well, before I, I answer that question, um, well, within our platform, basically, it's not only one uh, component. We have several components within our platform. I call it uh, graphical user interface. So that's basically, let me say it this way, the user downloads our software. When he downloads our software, he installs the software. Then he gets a screen in front of him. That's the graphical user interface. Or with, within that screen, he has actually five different platforms, components, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, One of them is the games one. So he can just choose games within the set with a different menu. Then there is also a wallet involved, a decentralized marketplace, a communication chat program, and a social media control panel. Okay. When I said before that our platform is a tool for, for gamers, for users, well, this is absolutely one of the best tools for the user because he can, uh, uh, let's say he's going to play a game. Yeah? And on the, on the moment he's playing a game, he can say, um, well, now let me say it this way. He wants to go and stream at, let's say, 1 o'clock. So at 12.30, he decides to send a message to all his uh, followers or friends. Well, he can do it within our platform with one button. So he can write a message, press on send, and it will be sent to Instagram, it's to Twitter, to Kakao, to any social media uh, platform he has uh, pre-programmed in it. Yeah. This the same the same will happen with the NEP. So when he wants to have a network expansion program, he can write several messages and those messages can be sent with one press on the button to all his followers or, or his friends. Yeah. Um that's okay. what I, do, you just, do you just wanna you mentioned the NEP there, just for somebody who's not familiar with the NEP, Cal. Do you wanna mm -hmm. expand on that? Just to explain what the NEP is? Uh, yes, NEP is nothing more than our network expansion program. It's basically a refer a friend program. Uh, when you have downloaded our software, uh, installed it, then we all, we uh, we, in, uh, we incentivize you to talk with your friends uh, about our program, uh, about our uh, software, so that they can get involved and see what we have. By doing that, we're going to reward you. Okay, um, that's basically that's basically it in a nutshell. Okay, um, the not non nutshell version is that when we're gonna use your GPU and we're gonna give you a reward, well, a part of the benefits from your uh, uh, the person you have referred, you will earn. It's approximately ten percent, not approximately, right. it isn't ten percent. Yeah. yeah? Um, maybe Martin, um, your English is a bit better. Maybe uh, you wanna. Uh, elaborate a little bit more on it? Let, let, let me, yeah, I'll keep it simple because it doesn't need to get complicated, right? One of the ways yeah. to earn more money is to have more hash power. Yep, the more hash power, hash power is a measure of your GPU's contribution towards the the, the processing power, if you will. Yeah, we, we call it hash power. So the more hash you contribute, the bigger your rewards. Now, if you've got a computer of a certain size, you know, you're limited to the hash that that computer is capable of generating. So what we decided to do was because uh, gamers have so many friends, so many contacts, in-game chats and you know Discord and all of the other chats that every gamers are on, we decided to take advantage of the fact that every large success story in gaming history has been based on viral growth, right? It's been based on one gamer telling another gamer about it. So, you know, Fortnite did not recruit the, like, whatever 200 million users they have now individually. They got some gamers who enjoyed the experience and they told their friends about it who did the same. So we are just taking advantage of a, a natural phenomenon um, that's, it's an accelerated natural phenomenon in the gaming world because it's such a highly connected demographic, right? So we've said, okay, if you uh, use our, uh, our platform, tell some friends about it, you'll get 10% of their hash power contribution as well. So literally, if you just tell 10 people, that's 10 people, 10%, that's the equivalent to you having another full computer generating rewards for you. So when you consider 
uh, the number of contacts in the gaming world and the fact that we've taken this beyond just one level of referrals, you know, you could very quickly be generating referrals from the equivalent of, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 computers. So it's the fastest way to increase your rewards. We've just taken a, a standard referral program, you know, and turned it on its head uh, to allow people to earn money way beyond what would be, uh, earn rewards way beyond what would be possible with the limitations of one single computer. Yeah. So that's that. I think, about, uh, I think that was, when you said that, that's exactly the point. Uh, well, we want to have a natural thing. I mean, yeah. I looked at my sons and uh, when I was talking with him about gaming and explaining him the NEP and explaining what we do, he was like, oh, can I tell my friends? So it's like exactly. a natural thing to get it in. So what we want to do is with our platform is we want to make it so sexy and so beautiful and, and perfect possible so that as a natural thing that he's going to ask, uh, uh, talk, tell, talk, talk to his friends to get it as, as soon as possible installed. Exactly. That's the, that's the basic idea. This is, this is one of the key concepts that we've had yeah. in mind from the very beginning. We want to take advantage of the natural behavior of a gamer. We don't want to change their behavior. Uh, a gamer goes online, plays games, right? When he enjoys and, uh, and um, uh, when he thinks highly of anything he's using, he recommends it, yeah? Um, gamers are naturally buying in-game assets and they're naturally buying games to improve their skills and they're naturally buying new, you know, new, new games. We just wanted to say, okay, let's make our solution improve every aspect of a gamer's natural behavior. Exactly. We're just enhancing the gaming experience. You don't have to change any behavior. We're just saying, hey, listen, okay, you, you like recommending things you like about gaming? Well, here, you know, there's some more rewards for doing it. Okay, you want to buy some more in-game assets? There's the rewards to be able to do it. There's the marketplace to be able to do it on. There's the token to be able to finance it yourself, to be able to fund it yourself. So that's really key. Okay, Cal, let me move on here because I have okay. so many questions that I've kind of grouped all these together regarding the wallet. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. There's so many names here that... Uh, Guys, if you don't mind, I'm just going to group all these wallet questions together. Um, and I'm going to say, Cal, can you please explain how does the wallet work? Yeah. Will I be able to keep other cryptos in it? Um, is it just GMRX? Is this a place where I hold my assets? Yeah, how yeah. do I make transfers? You've mentioned buying, selling, renting, all yeah. in. Is this all revolved around... Yeah. The, uh, the wallet. So if you could explain the wallet, we'd cover you know, yeah. pretty much all of these wallet questions here. Yeah, this is, this is basically the, the, the part where, uh, where, where we are unique, I won't say, but we are definitely unique in the way of we are the only one we're having it at the moment, and which is also a part of uh, making our platform so sexy as possible that uh, you are, can do everything within our screen, let's say, without leaving our platform, yeah. Yeah, the wallet. Uh, the wallet is actually divided in in several um, uh, parts, several menus. Okay, uh, one of one of them is the the gaming assets. So within your wallet, within your screen, you see in front of you, you have the you have the gaming assets. Uh, there you can have your uh, your skins, your helmets, your guns. It's all in categories. You have the all nice uh, nice lined up. Uh, you could uh, sell those, you can rent those out, you can auction them. Um, basically, all that is done by smart contract. It will be so easy that, for example, even if someone else sees you play a game and he knows your name, he can go and, and, uh, and search for you, find you, and he can take a look in what you have in your wallet. Yeah. Then he sees Martin has a nice helmet, which he won the game yesterday. Well, and he can ask a request for renting that helmet to you. Then you will receive, uh, as the owner, a request from that player. Uh, and then you can say, yes, I accept. On the moment you accept the, the, the rental agreement, then a smart contract get in, uh, in place, they get deployed. And then your helmet goes from your wallet to the uh, rent rentee's uh, wallet and he can use that helmet to play his games okay the other section is the gamer x section 
this is just the section where we're going to have some balance from your uh, game of X tokens. And uh, here the same thing. You, have, you can do normal transactions, uh, a, a selling, buying. You can request from, from, from other uh, user uh, some tokens, etc., etc. The subscription section is a section where you can do all subscription. Um, this is a control panel for subscription matters. You can see how many uh, you have uh, you have uh, done today to be an active uh, user, etc., etc. Basically standard, let's say so. And then we have a crypto wallet. Uh, that's the idea is to put there five, uh, five top five uh, cryptocurrencies: uh, EOS, uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, Tron, and maybe Dash. Yeah, users can use it to store or to send or receive cryptocurrencies. And in the future versions, we might also convert a cryptocurrency. So you can convert, for example, Bitcoin to Ethereum. That's something we have, we have uh, thought about. Uh, I need to make a note here that this will not be released in the first phase. This will probably gonna be in the second or the third phase. We're gonna roll out this, uh, this feature. Yeah. So basically the, 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 the crypto wallet has everything our wallet has everything inside what the user needs to be active with a our platform and also cryptocurrencies outside of our platform yeah. okay yeah one thing um we can't talk about right now but we do have an nda ongoing conversation with uh with a major player there don't we calvin Yes, we have. And as you said, we are on the NDA. We cannot talk about it. Yeah. But uh, yes, we are talking with a major player to get uh, part of the technology in. And it will sure. probably going to be released in the next month, six weeks. We're going to show who that partner is. Yeah. Um, and assuming we uh, we work out, they're keen to work with us. We're keen to work with them. Um, but that that will be uh, that will be quite big news. Uh, yes, it is. As and when, as and when that breaks, it's it's leading technology. It's it's a, it's a it's a key player, isn't it? It's a it's a major yes. name. Yes. So yes. it's a, it's a, it has also to do with EOS. I need to say that I can yeah. say this. But it's not not uh, yeah. not not it's not a secret. Uh, yeah. It has to do with EOS. Uh, EOS. Uh, you must understand that all the smart contracts which we're going to have in our wallet and also on our marketplace are based on the EOS blockchain. Yeah. There is where gaming meets blockchain. Let me say it this way. Um, so yes, this, uh, these are these partners. These people are very uh, well in uh, cutting edge technology. Uh, already existing technology works good. So uh, we, more will come. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got a few questions here. The first one came from Yang Park from the Kakao Group, um, but there's a few other people asking again similar type of questions. So I grouped these. Um, he specifically asked about this. I'm going to, just going to amplify his so that you can cover all of this. Yeah, what kind of games will you have available? Oh, that's an exciting one. That's an exciting one. Also, one of the things we uh, we did in Madrid, speaking with a lot of game developers and games uh, producers, to see you know what's in the market and uh, what they have. And uh, well, that was actually a uh, great couple of days. I need to admit, well, because the first two days, that was what I basically have done speaking with these people. And then when you when you came, yeah. we actually followed them up. Uh, we're gonna have uh, several games uh, in our platform. Yeah, we're gonna have uh, games where you can uh, do um, some skill training. Uh, we're gonna have uh, premium pay games. Uh, premium free-to-play games. We're gonna have uh, virtual reality games, our own uh, exclusive for gaming uh, games, and we're gonna have some free retro games. Yeah, fun part. Okay. Uh, if you want, I could uh, elaborate on each one a little bit more. Do By the way, Calvin. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. We have time for that. I'm okay. still grouping. There's still questions flying in. So, uh, but but go for it. I think that's an exciting thing to talk about. Yeah, it is absolutely yes, Martin. It absolutely is. I think that um, that uh, the the games is well. Of course, that's the reason why everybody is on uh, on the gaming. That's why our name is gaming, and that's what our platform is built for. So, but we need to understand that uh, when I said in the beginning that the, our platform is a tool for for gamers. Well, this is where the skill training and development games come in. Yeah? In these games, what you can do is you can learn 
your hand-eye coordination. Um, this is um, the, here you can learn many skills on professional gamer needs to develop to be a professional gamer or even just a, a good gamer. Yeah. Uh, in this menu, we focus on the hand-eye coordination. Uh, we have several games which will help you develop uh, better skills in how to move in games. Yeah, it could be shooting, it could be moving from left to right, etc. etc. The idea is to have uh, also uh, famous uh, gamers, pro gamers involved here, yeah. so they can set up their program, what they have done to get at the level they are, and share it with our users. Yeah. It's, a, it's an exciting part. It also, it's not only for gaming. I believe also, and you came up with it the other day, no? that in England, that the RAF Right. is uh, using games for training their pilots, I believe so, wasn't it? Yeah, there was an article, Calvin, on the BBC um, talking about how gamers are getting advanced jobs and better jobs because of the skills they're acquiring playing games. And um, one, of the, one of the examples was the RAF, which is the British Royal Air Force. Mm -hmm. And they're recruiting gamers, right, because they've got high... Ref they've got very, very fast reflexes, they work under pressure, they can work in teams, you know, when they're, when they're playing games often they're working together in teams. So they've got coordination, leadership ability, decision making skills, decision making under pressure, mm -hmm. yeah, accuracy, speed, all of these skills which, um, which were interesting as base level skills for RAF for various uh, functions within within the Royal Air Force. Yeah. So it was actually good to see because I know, you know, I mean, as the father of two gamers, my kids spend a lot of time gaming when they're not studying. They spend a lot of time on their computers. You know, one of the questions I often get from other parents is, you know, how do you control their time on it? Um, but you see the skills that they're developing. Both of my kids have taken psychometric tests at school, which are tests on your ability to think quickly, solve problems, you know, and they, they got really high scores on these, yeah. on these tests because they're playing games where they are literally solving problems like all the time. Yeah, yeah? speed of light. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think it's good for gaming generally to understand that games isn't just about you know, being locked away in your room on your own playing on some crazy game. No, it's a social thing. You know, gaming is, a, is very much a social event. And some of the skills that these games develop are, you know, are very, very useful skills, especially in a digital world, which yeah. is where we're heading more and more. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's exactly, that's, that's what we want to do in the skills and, and the training development section we have. We want to well, develop their skills more and more, especially the hand-eye coordination. So maybe they're also going to be use this for, well, when they're going to apply for a job and get the great results as your son had. Then we have another menu section, which is the premium pay games. Um, these are games that normally uh, a gamer needs to pay for. Yeah. Well, our users have a way to play these games based on our games activation system. I call it GAS. Yeah, so basically, you need to pay GAS to play these games. Uh, the GAS system is basically uh, similar as a um, mobile telephone, where you need to top up every time you call. Or you, pay, you top up with $10, and then you, you, you call, and then it goes down to 9, 8, 7, and when it's in zero, you can't call anymore. Well, we have a similar system uh, we're going to build in here with the premium pay games. So we, as a company, are going to pay for the games. We're going to buy, for example, 1,000 licenses. We're going to have the game. What we're going to do is we're going to put them in a section for the, for the games activation system. You will have a working balance in your wallet. Uh, you can play the game, and your balance go down. When the balance hit, uh, hits a threshold, uh, for example, uh, 10 tokens, you're going to get a warning, or you only have 10 tokens left, which will give you an, another hour, then you can top it up, or you can let it top up automatically. Yeah? This is a great way for gamers who don't, who don't have much money to still play games which are in the market out there, the latest games, and they can play that. And also, if they leave their computer uh, uh, um, uh, online and working uh, in the GPU running for us, then we can give them rewards, and with those rewards, they can instantly play straight away the games afterwards. Yeah. I hope I explained that right. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, we are uh, to give an example of premium pay games because there are already premium paying games out there. Uh, for example, the ones that at this moment are on sale for Steam is, for example, uh, Emission in Virtual Reality, uh, Crazy Stone Deep Learning, uh, X Plane 11, uh, Danga Ropa uh, version 3, Night of Azure 2, uh, several games that you just need to pay for. They are not, they are not free to play. Yeah. Um, Hold on, Martin. Someone is uh, is not yeah, the, on, the, on the room. Yeah, the, I I think we're full. I'm not sure if there's a gap every so often and somebody keeps trying to get in, but it's it's pretty yeah. full. So if, okay, well, uh, we can let anybody else in. In there's like I can see all these people in the waiting room <laughs> can't get in. Yeah, I, I keep hearing a, a beep all the yeah, time, that's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well then uh, then we have the premium free-to-play to games. Well, these are games that the user has access to a significant portion of the content without paying. Uh, there are actually at this moment hundreds of these free-to-play games to choose from. Uh, the famous one, of course, is Fortnite, Battle Royale, yeah. League of Legends, Kingdom Rush. Uh, everybody can play these games, everybody can buy um, in-game items, which will not uh, help their performance in the game, but will just aesthetic nice nice skins and nice swords and nice whatever they buy yeah this we're gonna have also um, these games will always be on part of our platform because users like them yeah. virtual reality well not much to, to say about virtual reality uh, we will uh, we will have a virtual reality section uh, I think the beginning we will have uh, most virtual reality games that are already developed we will not have our own games just pure bit pure on, uh, on, uh, on because of the finances, let's say so. We don't want to spend too much money on it right now, uh, but we will have. Uh, then we also will have our ex own exclusive games. Yeah? Um, the own exclusive game, gaming games, this is a nice section, okay? This is actually where we are totally unique in the world and no one has this at the moment. Uh, we want to do is we want to acquire uh, license rights and licenses of uh, mobile games and we're going to adapt them uh, make them compatible for PC gaming and make them compatible for our platform uh, by making compatible our platform means two things compatible for our token and compatible with our smart contracts and compatible with uh, the digital items that means that if someone has uh, playing one of our own exclusive games and he has for example a helmet he can use the helmet in all of our games yeah so one helmet he plays in one shooting game he stops that game and he just opens another game and starts playing the game and he wants yeah. to put the same helmet on, he can do that as long as it is in our own exclusive gaming game. Yeah, because yeah. all our games are compatible. This is something that no one has at the moment. Uh, we're working on it. It's uh, going to be very exciting. It must be, of course, a game that is a similar game. I mean, if you're going to play a game that is a caterpillar who is eating leaves from, from, from a tree, well, it doesn't need a helmet or a gun to shoot, so it's not going to work. But as long as it's a similar uh, game, then it will work. Uh, same, the same with skins. Then we have a free section. This is like the nice one, the free games and the retro games. Yeah, these are probably games we don't have any license anymore. Uh, we're going to just add them because they are fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people play them. Uh, from all the users we're going to have, there's always some percentage to play. I see your smile on your face. Yeah, yeah I, I grew up with those games. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. So yeah. these, are, these, are, these are fun stuff, you know, Frogger, Pac-Man, Pong, uh, Donkey Kong, uh, these kind of games. Yeah, we're gonna add them uh, add them to the platform. It doesn't cost us anything. It's just a great service to, to give, and uh, some users will be happy with it. And there will be no uh, gas uh, deducted from the balance. It's just nice to have a uh, nice platform. The idea is that the user comes with us and the gamer plays with us, and within our own platform, he does everything. He doesn't have to leave anymore. He can stay there, and if he wants to speak with his friends, he go to our communication panel and he speaks with his friends. Normally, I see my son playing, and when my son plays games at the moment and he wants to speak with a friend or the friend is in the game like Fortnite that's easy because they just speak with each other but if the friend is not in the game at the moment what does he need to do he needs to go to uh, to, to uh, discord and speak with a friend there there's not a screen or he needs to close the screen first and go to the friend well with our platform not doesn't have to it's all uh, seamless integrated in one screen um, uh, that's basically our games Martin um, okay. those are the different <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, fantastic. I mean, I'm going to push us along here. We've been going 40 minutes. Um, let, me, let me group some more of these questions together so, uh, so they're more logical here, so I'm not moving around quite as much. Mm -hmm. So um, here's another one. That this has been asked quite a lot. I got a lot of questions here from the Cacao Group about this, yeah? Can you tell us a bit about the marketplace, why it's different or unique, what's unique about it and what differentiates it from other marketplaces? Yeah, um, well, yes. Um, well, our marketplace has normal features, okay? Actually, good question. It's, uh, we have normal features. Uh, normal features is a marketplace where you have several categories, several games, uh, several categories like a helmet, like a gun, uh, people can do searches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's all, all normal, let's say so. Uh, ours, of course, is uh, powered by our GamerX crypto token, blockchain-based, uh, decentralized, uh, and you can spend uh, only gamer X to buy, rent, or auction um, uh, digital items. Okay, uh, fully smart contract powered. Uh, allow a peer to peer, so from user to user. You can user can uh, make several transactions like renting, uh, selling, uh, uh, buying uh, digital items. Um, you can also buy directly from uh, gaming.io uh, gamer X tokens, and basically all the transactions are in gamer X tokens, as I said. Where we are different, as what I explained before, is that any um, item you buy in our marketplace can be used in our uh, own game, exclusive gaming games in each one of them. So one helmet you can use in 20, 25, 30, 100 games, doesn't matter, as long as it is our own exclusive game, which are all being adapted to use all the items we have from the marketplace. Or compatible games, Calv, or anybody yeah. else who chooses to build with the same protocol. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's 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 going to happen. I think in, uh, in the next phases, where our partners will come and say, "Listen, I have this game. I want your game on our platform." We will say, "Yes, we want your game on our platform, but you must have this. Um, you must um, uh, adapt your game to our norms." Right. To this. So they, they could use they could use, for example, a gun in a different game. It may not have the same skin, right? But it's a compatible cross-platform gun because it's been built. And part of that is the whole upcoming changes of gaming. We can talk about this because there's one of the questions later Excellent. With, with regarding to, um, to blockchain-based game development. So, yeah. all right. We, we, also, we also build one thing in, Martin, which I don't, I'm not sure if others have or no, but that's where a user can request an item. So if a user, for example, sees another item online or whatever, he can make his own, um, he can make his own uh, design, let's say, so mock-up, then he can upload his mock-up and ask, the, ask our users, our community, from, hey, listen, I want to have this skin. Can someone make one for right, me? Right, right. Then, and then a developer or an artist can make that and upload it and sell or rent or auction it to the person who asked for it. Okay, um, one from Paki from the Philippines here, um, and I, once again, like I'm grouping these together because if not, I think this AMA, we've had more questions than we have on, on the previous ones, yeah, there's more people interested in this, which uh, is exactly what we hoped for and what we wanted, because this is the real benefit to the, to the gamer. Um, so this is, tell us about your community, there's a lot of individual community questions, so just to, tell us about the community, Calvin, please. Yeah, community is, uh, is, uh, is very important for us as gaming. I think community is actually important in the whole gaming industry anyway, or any business uh, where some community is someone who's backing up the, the, the brand or the company is, uh, is value and is, is, wor is very worthful because uh, you know what you have and you also know that uh, uh, the community will keep you sharp on the, on, on the, on the best product, let's say so. Yeah, so basically we have, uh, yeah, it's important for brand loyalty. Uh, we're going to reward users. We're going to have prizes. We're going to have tournaments. Uh, one of the most exciting things is the ranking we're going to have and challenges we're going to have. About the ranking, that's something that really excites me because as I said in the beginning, this our platform is a tool for gamers to be a professional gamer if they want to. Well, you must understand that all the games we have, most of all the games we have, will be on our platform in our own servers. That means that all the data that uh, the, the the results of the games we will have, and from all this data we're going to have a ranking, several rankings, and there will be one ranking will be the 
will be the the ranking that uh, shows that the player of the month let's say so and so what we want to do is uh, one of the things we have planned is to have our own eSport team or be a sponsor of an eSport team in 2020 um, so we're gonna choose the best players from our platform to take part in a competition to be uh, a part of our team Okay, and that's something that's very exciting. But furthermore, uh, in our community, you can also do an, uh, a challenge. You can ch challenge another player. So I, from Sweden, can say, Martin, uh, I challenge you to play um, a, a game, and the one who wins gets, for example, the X amount of tokens we have, we have, we have, uh, we have as a wager. So that we can do, uh, all by smart contracts, of course. Um, basically also what we have in our uh, community is that you can stay up to date for all the global uh, gaming news we will have a new sticker running around there uh, we also will talk with partners which gonna accept uh, gamer X as a payment method uh, not only for digital stuff but also for headphones ma mice uh, uh, computers or anything uh, Gamers can also check in our community section to their social media feed. They can send messages in the social media feed with one button to all the social media platforms they have configured it. Um, and they can be on part of a gaming discussion board. I think that's the most retro thing we have in our uh, platform, a discussion board. But we notice that gamers like that because some gamers want to read about how to go to the next level in this game. Or some, uh, and not for us as a company, is important because we can use it also as a help many users will might have a challenge with some part of our platform they can ask the question in the in the discussion board and they will get an instant uh, uh, answer from our moderators or admins or from other users where there's a similar problem in the past yeah yeah so that's gonna, why community is important absolutely i'm gonna add one thing there calby you, you talked about that from the user aspect and um from a business point of view I, I, I've seen several interviews with Jeff Bezos, you know, richest man in the world, the world's most highly valued company. And he said his emphasis and the reason that made Amazon so successful, of course, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, was because he maintained his, um, his business customer centric. He said, the only thing we strive to do is continually give the, the customer a better experience, a better service. Yeah. So one of the big advantages for us as a company about having a community is we are actually always in touch with our users all the time. We can, we can adapt quickly, we can listen to them, we can get instant feedback. They let us know if there's something that isn't right or they don't like about any of the new features or things that we introduce. So there's no better way for us to assure that we're directly addressing the you know the goals and adapting in a very fast changing world like gaming is adapting and making sure that we're always putting the customer first so from from the user point of view and from a business point of view to make sure we're best serving our users community is invaluable okay well, we sir. our aim calvin was to keep this to under an hour so we covered pretty much 90 percent of the questions here there, there's one really good question uh, been asked by a few people. So I think if we do this one, we're, we're pretty much covered. Yeah, unless there's anything else that comes in. Okay. So Jensen from Instagram asked, but this is another one, again, <laughs> that, um, there's been similar questions have been asked several times, right? Why are we using a crypto to token to reward users? Why are we not just doing it in fiat in a US dollar, for example? Yeah, that's actually a very good question. Uh, we had this question several times before, and uh, well, we have for several reasons for that. Uh, first of all, most of the gaming industry is heading towards blockchain. In fact, uh, it's one of the industries leading uh, the way along with the finance or with banking, supply chains, etc., etc. I think even more than uh, banking or supply chains. Uh, that means that game development, gaming asset, gaming asset ownership, and gaming payments will be blockchain-based in the future, Martin. Correct. Um, it makes sense for us to be posi positioned uh, in in in, uh, in in the place to the best place 
to, to get there, let's say so. And also we have a leverage purchasing power. Yeah, we can reward uh, a user which on much more higher value than the actually the USD value. For example, uh, when we're talking about uh, helmets, uh, in-game items, well, those in-game items we might buy in bulk, let's say thousands of them, different colors, different heights, different, uh, different sizes, etc., etc. Uh, those will cost us, for example, I say one dollar. Well, for the user, we can sell those for less amount. So the user has more benefit. We leverage, leveraging the power. Yeah. Well, that's basically that's basically yeah. the answer I could give at this moment. Or this. Correct. I mean, I'll chip in there as well, Carl, mm -hmm. because um, it, pretty much every big gaming platform out there, every big gaming success uses their own internal token as their own internal currency. And from a simple mechanics point of view, you know, if you're like Fortnite use, uses V bucks, yeah. They don't have prices of any of their in-game assets in dollars and yen and euros and, you know, Venezuelan bolivars and all of that, even though they have users in all of those currencies. What you do is you buy V-Bucks, and when you're inside there, their whole virtual economy works with their virtual currency, which in their case is the V-Book. Yep. So once again, we don't want gamers to change their behavior. We're giving gamers a token that they're already used to using. I mean, gamers were using tokens, like virtual tokens, right? Yeah. 10 years before Bitcoin appeared. Exactly. Yeah, they, they already knew about this. They're the fastest explanation I've ever given to my kids to how Bitcoin worked. I mean, it literally took me seconds yeah. to explain how it worked. My parents still don't get it, right? Um, because they lived and they'd grown up in virtual economies with virtual currencies. So we're doing exactly the same. The only difference between our token and the other tokens that have been used in other gaming platforms is ours is a crypto-based token because we're building for the future by using blockchain. Yeah, so that's, blockchain. that's the main reason. Um, okay, we're coming up to the hour, Calvin. Um, anything else you'd like to add? Um, We've answered, you know, really... A, a massive amount of questions there. No, basically, I'm like I said, I'm very happy. I think I'm living yeah. a dream, uh, building uh, one of the best, uh, most beautiful gaming platforms in the world, working with the team we're working with, with, with yeah. you guys. So, no, I think uh, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much, Martin. Okay, let me wrap this up then. Firstly, thank you, Calvin. I think it's great for people to actually um, listen to the originator of the idea. Um, it's especially because... A lot of the AMAs we've done so far have been more oriented to the technical side, the business side, the marketing side, um, and this is your baby. The, the whole product is your is your concept, your idea, your baby. So there's been nobody better. I think you've been superb answering the questions. Thank you, Calvin. Thank um, you. What I will say as well, let me finish off, guys, by wrapping this up and saying we are having a second IEO um, this coming week. Um, all of the details on Telegram, if you're not following us on Telegram, please go to the website and follow the, the Telegram icon, which is all over our website. Follow us on our, on our Telegram channel. Um, if, um, if you want to partake in that, you know, there's all the instructions are on Telegram, where to go, how to register for the exchange. You need to go and get verified and everything beforehand, so you might want to go and start that process right away. Yeah, you'll be able to buy tokens um, at an extraordinarily good price. So, again, follow Telegram, all the details on there. We can answer any questions about that directly. And Calvin is in Korea. Calvin, yeah, Calvin yeah, uh, yeah. On the 17th to the, to the 21st of November. So that's like, I think you leave this Sunday. Today's Friday. Yeah, the cradle of gaming and the cradle yeah. of blockchain. I mean, I've been twice myself. Uh, I went with Andrew last time, our ma chief marketing officer. Calvin's going this time. And it's going to, you know, it is mind-blowing once you get there. And you actually see the scale of gaming, the size, first of all, the size of Seoul, which is an extraordinary city. And you're really in the hotbed. It's, it's where we've done a lot of our activities so far to get the word out about, about gaming because it's, it's the heart, it's the heart of crypto, it's the heart of gaming. Um, and uh, if anybody's over there, Cal, they're more than welcome to 
to contact you via Telegram and meet yes. you over there, right? Looking forward to. Yes, yeah, so, um, please do. Um, if any questions were missed, guys, because there's been people, like this whole thing, although you can't hear it in the background, the <laughs> chat's been beeping continually with people trying to get in who couldn't. So I'm sure we've missed some questions. If there's any questions at all that have been missed, please um, put them in the Telegram chat, and we'll all be manning the Telegram chat you know, a lot over the next few days, just there's going to be a lot of questions coming in uh, regarding the I.O., the product, or everything. Other than that, thank you very much indeed for your time, for your, intent, uh, your attention. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this chat. We hope you've en enjoyed meeting, you know, formerly Calvin, and... Uh, I'll see you guys on Telegram. Thank you, Calvin, and thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Martin. All right. Bye-bye now.